Hello, this is Mr. Buffington, and we are looking at percent word problems, the last lesson of this unit. We're going to talk about proportions a little bit, and then practice with percent word problems, and then we're going to do some more problems, or some more practice. The thing is that with this unit, we've been using proportions the entire time. So although we are doing percent problems, we're going to look at them as a proportion. Or, in the words of, Lords of Lord of the Rings, one proportion to solve them all. We're going to use this proportion for all of our percent word problems. There might be other shorter ways in certain cases. But this is the only way to universally solve all percent word problems with just one method. <clears throat> so let's look. The part over the whole. A quick way to understand this is the part is usually the smallest number. The whole, um, the percent is the easiest thing to find. The whole is usually the larger number and 100 is always 100. The biggest challenge to solving a question like this is being able to identify those four parts, put them into this proportion, and solve. In each case, you will be given th well, three of the numbers and be asked to solve for the other one. You'll always have the 100. So really, you'll be given two of those other remaining numbers and asked to be solved for the unknown one. Let's take a look. If we have a question that says, what is 25% of 200? You can set up a proportion like this and identify the parts. Well, the percent is 25%. Like I said, that one's the easiest one to pick out. So we'll put it in there where the percent goes. Then we have a part out of a whole. What is 25% of 200? Well, 200 is the whole amount, and we're trying to find 25% of that number. What number is 25% out of 200? So there we go. And then we solve it using cross multiplying. Let's try another one. If we're asked 20 out of 30 is what percent? For this one, again, if we set up the proportion, the what percent means the percent is our unknown value. We don't know what the percent is. What we do know is that it's 20 out of 30. So 20 out of 30 is what percent? And then we solve it as a proportion. All right, let's look at this type of question. If you have 40 is 16% of what number? We'll set up our proportion. We know 16 is the percent. The percent is always the easiest one to pick out. 40 is 16% of what number? So what number is our unknown value? We don't know the whole number, but we know 40 is part of that number. 40 is 16% of some number. So we're solving for our unknown value there on the bottom. Notice with every one of these questions that we set up, in every single case, we have one unknown value and we use the same exact proportion. That's why I like this method for solving all percent problems. Like I said, there are some shortcuts. There are many shortcuts um, for percent problems, but you'd have to use a different one in each case. This way, it's one proportion and it solves all percent questions. All right. Let's do some practice. First off, what is 60% of 220? We're going to set up our proportion. We know 60 is the percent, so it's going there. We are looking for a value out of 220. So 220 is our whole number, and the part is our unknown. We're going to solve using cross multiplying. So the steps real quick. We multiply the diagonal numbers divide by the number that's left. So it looks like this, 220 times 60 divided by 100. This is a review because we've been solving using cross multiplying for a long time. This is great practice for using that. So if we've solved and it's 132, we can put that in there and we can double check our work, right? Cross multiplying always lets us double check our work, which is fantastic. All right. 
Let's try another practice problem. This one here, 15 out of 20 is what percent? You're given the proportion there. I want you to try to solve this one on your own or at least fill in the blanks, the part, the whole, and the percent. One of them will be an unknown value. The other two were given in this statement. So try that out. All right. In this question, we're asked 15 out of 20 is what percent? The percent is the unknown. It's what percent? I don't know what percent it is. And the other fraction will be 15 out of 20. 15 is the part, 20 is the whole. So then you solve using cross multiplying. So again, if you have not done that at this point, pause the video. Now that it's set up, use cross multiplying to solve this proportion. We're going to solve using cross multiplying, which we, means we multiply the diagonal numbers and divide by the number that's left. 100 times 15 divided by 20. That gives us 75, so that goes right in there. In other words, 15 out of 20 is 75%. We can double check our work using cross multiplying, and we check to make sure that we get the same number on both sides when we multiply, and we do, so we're in good shape. Practice question number three. 40 is 16% of what number? I'll give you our proportion there. I want you to try to set it up and solve it. You might need to pause for several minutes to be able to do all the math. That's okay. Pause, come back, and we'll look at the answer. All right, welcome back. 16% is the easiest thing to put into this proportion. 40 is 16% of some certain number. So it's 40 is the part, and the whole number is our unknown. We're going to solve using cross multiplying. Multiply the numbers that are diagonal, divide by the remaining number. So it should look like this. 100 times 40 divided by 16 gives us 250. And then we double check our work using cross multiplying. 100 times 40 is 4,000. 250 times 16 is 4,000, so our work is correct. All right, we know that the hardest part is filling in this proportion. You have solved proportions for many, many lessons now. We've been solving proportions for a long time. We solved it in our unit on fractions. We solved, we've solved it before. So filling in the proportion is really what's new and challenging for this. So let's try it out with a word problem. All right. I bought a $30 shirt on sale for 20% off. How much does the shirt cost? Take all the pieces of information you have inside of this question and try to fill in our proportion. The part, the whole, the percent. Go for it. All right. When I'm looking at this, the easiest thing that I always pick out first is the percent because it's written with a percent sign or it says what percent, right? If it's our unknown value. So this is our percent, 20%. Now we have to identify what is the part and what is the whole. One of them we don't know and one of them we do. I bought a $30 shirt on sale for 20% 20 20 off. How much does the shirt cost? So you're basically discounting the price of a shirt, right? So the total cost is 30, and your discounted amount is actually going to be the part. When we find the 20%, then we have to do one more step. So right now we're calculating what is 20% of one of $30. Then we'll have to take the original price, $30, and actually subtract that 20%, okay? So this one here can be um, a little bit tough because it does have that extra step. Now, I'm going to tell you something that's a little bit more advanced. Um, so if you're a little bit lost right now and you're not ready to, for advanced, plug your ears. If you're ready to be a little bit more tricky, watch what we can do. Ooh, we switched it to 80%. Now, some of you might look at this and say, well, why would you do that? If we switch it to 80%, 
That means we're calculating what is 80% of the cost of the shirt. So basically, if we're doing that, we're doing the subtracting first because 80% of the shirt is going to be the new cost of the shirt. You're paying 80% because you're saving 20%. So if you can keep that straight or if that makes sense to you, then you can use that shortcut. If not, put in 20% and then subtract it from the original cost. Either way, you'll get the same answer. And either way, you're solving using cross multiplying and you're setting it up using this proportion. All right. Filling in the proportion. Number two, on my lesson quiz, I scored four out of five. What percent did I have correct? Fill that in and come back to check. All right, are you back? What percent, whenever you have it say what percent, that means the, the percent is your unknown value. The other fraction is four out of five. So we've got what percent, question mark. We've got our whole number of five and our part is four. I don't know why that question mark disappears. All right. Now we're filling in the proportion again for a new word problem. This is the third type of word problem. I've completed 17 lessons and my progress bar says I've finished 25%. How many total lessons are in the class? All right. So this is a great question for setting up a proportion. If I finished 17, my progress bar says I finished 25%. How many total lessons? Let's think about that for a second. What's the part? It's the number of lessons you've completed. What's the whole? The unknown total number of lessons. That's what you're trying to figure out, right? And what's your percent? It's 25. So when we fill it in, it should look like that. And that's it. Now let's keep going. We are going to actually solve some word problems. And this one here um, is a word problem about a calculator. I bought a $15 calculator when it was 24% off. What do I pay for the calculator? Pause the recording and try this one on your own. You need to set it up and then solve. Go. All right, I'm going to set this up. Those are the pieces. We don't know the whole amount or I'm sorry, 15 is the whole amount. We don't know the part. That's the amount that you are saving, 24% of 15. You don't know what that is. But the percent, 24 goes in up top above the 100. So let's go ahead and calculate using cross multiplying. We'll multiply the numbers that are diagonal, divide by the number that's left. It will look like this and we get 3.6, 3.6. It's kind of a funny number, but with money, it makes perfect sense. 3.6 is $3.60. That is the amount that you are saving. That's 24%. So before we move on, we'll check our work, and it is correct. But we have to solve by taking that $15 calculator and subtracting the amount that we're saving. Okay, it's 24% off or $3.60 off of our $15 calculator. So we are going to be paying $11.40. That's how we solve a word problem. Let's try another word problem. I have 12 marbles and Kaz has 18. What percent of the total marbles do I have? Set up the proportion and solve. This question can be tricky, so read it very carefully. Go. All right, what percent do I have means that what percent is my unknown? I don't know the percent. I do know how many marbles I have and the total number of marbles, but I do have to do a little bit of math here. I have to add up Kaz's marbles and my marbles to get the total number of marbles. There are 30 marbles. That's the whole number. And my amount out of 30 is 12. I have 12 out of 30. So that's the challenge with setting this one up is that it didn't say 
how what percent do, do I and do I have out of Kaz's marbles, right? It's what percent do I have out of the total number of marbles. Then we can set it up and solve like normal. We cross multiply, divide by the number that's left. 100 times 12 divided by 30 gives us 40. So therefore, I have 40%. Let's go ahead and check my work using cross multiplying. Boom, boom, 1200, perfect. So I have 40% of the marbles. Let's do one more word problem. I know this lesson's kind of going long. Word problem lessons tend to do that. I completed 17 lessons. My progress bar says I have finished 25%. Let's go ahead and solve this one. All right, we set this one up earlier, but now we're going to actually solve it using cross multiplying. We'll multiply 17 times 100, divide by 25, we get 68. I'm going to double check my work using cross multiplying. 1,700, 1,700, and that is correct. So I've checked my work. There are 68 total lessons with this word problem. All right, a couple things to remember. The one proportion is really helpful, okay? And there are definitely some shortcuts. If you use the one proportion, it can solve every problem. If you learn some shortcuts and you want to use them and they consistently work, go for it. But for now, practicing this proportion will help you solve every percent problem you come by. I hope that lesson was helpful for you. Have a wonderful day.